Okay, so now today we will talk about uh, XML. Okay, so in fact, um, I'm uh, reusing the slides that I use in the database discipline, which is database on the web, because XML is a, an important component of database on the web. And so, last class. Uh, who who can tell me what we talked at last class? What's the subject of the last class? It can be in Portuguese if you wish. And the beginning of the web, right? So I told you that there is three pillars in the beginning, which is the Protocol HTTP, okay, the language HTML, okay, and the URI, okay, and then I talked a bit about HTML, CSS. I, I think everybody knows CSS, so I didn't uh, spend too much time on CSS. Uh, I want just show you something that interesting. I don't know if you know Zen Garden. You know Zen Garden? Zen Garden CSS. This is an interesting website. Uh, what's the what's the challenge in the Zen Garden site? They they have the website, and the the HTML is fixed. Okay, that is you cannot change the HTML. You you can submit a CSS, just a style file, a CSF file, okay? And the challenge here is redesign or having several designs for the same content or for the same site. So if you see this website here, okay, it's in Garden, and it explains the, the subject and so on and so forth. And then you can change the CSS, for example, I want to try garments. Okay. Then you see, which is interesting, that the entire website will change. Since the resolution of this thing is not good, uh, it's not possible to see. You see, everything now is different. Okay. And if you try robot named Jim, for example, you see the same content. Okay with everything you see and it's important the important thing here the most important thing here is that they do not change the HTML the HTML is always the same they just change the CSS this is to show you the power of CSS okay in which you can change all the visual everything the organization where the things will appear just changing the CSS okay just to remember some topics we talked in the last class, okay? We will talk a bit more about CSF further, but now, today, I want to introduce you the XML, okay? So, the XML, uh, it was a kind of uh, new, new generation or new uh, way of thinking the web okay and why is that because first you may imagine that uh, uh, HTML is for humans we talked about that last class right so uh, <coughs> you have we have predefined tags and textual content and it's hard to read or to grasp the meaning of the things in the content okay so people start to think, okay, what about try to produce something for machines? Okay, so now my client is a machine, and the machine will read it and do something with this content. Good. So in that epoch, in the beginning of XML, they, they are still not talking about semantic web. Semantic web is more recent, but XML became part of the semantic web. 
And what is this, the idea of semantic web? We will study it deeply in the future by start to introduce the idea. The semantic web is this pile of uh, standards and protocols and so on and so forth. And the basic idea is the machines will talk with machines. Okay? So instead of thinking that um, there is a human being reading the things, okay, we are considered that now we want to have a machine. Okay? And this machine will not just read but browse. Okay? So it has links and the machine will go from one thing to other things. The machine will do search, will find things, okay, and will even do actions. Okay? And then this pile of standards uh, on the semantic web, it starts on the bottom with uh, something that's Unicode. And what's Unicode? The problem, the first problem in the beginning, the first problem is how uh, we will code the content. Because uh, we have a lot of standards, right? Ask. Uh, we have several ISO standards. We have UTF and so on and so forth. So they decided that Unicode will be the standard to code the characters on the web. And it's the basis of semantic web. The second thing we studied in the last class is the URI. Okay? So this thing we already saw is all the way we link, we add, define address for things. In fact, now we have something which is much, much more recent. Which is, um, I don't know if you know that, E-R-I, no, I-R-I, right? I, I never, I don't know how to spell letters in English. Do you believe in that? I don't know how to do it. Always I, is I-R-I? I-R-I. So I-R-I is a new concept. Who knows what is I-R-I? Someone know? It's the same thing of URI, but now you can put international characters on it. So, for example, in Portuguese, you can put accents in the words. So, you can have an address of a website, for example, in Portuguese, okay, with accents and everything. You can have Chinese addresses, okay? So, I don't know if you already know that. You can see in the browsers now, you can have an address in Chinese, with Chinese symbols. Okay? And how you do that? It's because if you have Unicode, Unicode you can put any character you wish in any language. Okay? And now you can produce the address using Unicode, so you can have this ERI, okay? which is international. Okay? It's a new thing. Okay, so the part of uh, URI we already saw in the last class, so we'll jump on this part. And then we go to the next layer of semantic web. And the next layer of semantic web is XML, namespaces, and XML schema. Okay? And what's XML? Is the first step. Okay. Uh, no. Before, before XML, let's talk about namespace. Because namespaces is an important concept. I will get, I will return to this concept more times because it seems just a simple stuff, but it's really an important thing. Because uh, the namespaces will be the, the, will be the, the way we, we can um, use several vocabularies in the same document. So, to put together several vocabularies, we will need to use namespaces. So, it's important to understand deeply what, how it works, because we use that a lot. Okay? So, the basic idea of namespaces, it has two roles. Okay? One, simplify the way how you write the addresses to be more shorter. Okay? This is the first uh, role. And the second role, 
uh, explicitly identify the origin of the vocabularies. Okay? So consider that you have two, um, two sources of addresses. Okay? Uh, afterwards, I will, I will, you will see what is these sources, depending on the context. In the, in the XML, it could be two schemas, for example. Okay? But if you go to RDF, which is another standard, could be two vocabularies. So what I'm calling here two sources is two, uh, in fact, two uh, sources on the web in which you get things. Okay? So consider the first one is Dublin Core. And this source has this bunch of URIs. And the second stuff is the uh, Vcard, which has this bunch of um, URIs. Okay? So, uh, the first thing, oh, it's in Portuguese. Ah, I forgot. So, are you telling, are you telling in English, but the slides, I forgot they are in Portuguese. So, they have vocabularies. They define vocabularies and they uh, improve the way you read things. Okay? Legibility. So, uh, for example, the URIs, these URIs in Dublin Core will become, uh, you define, for example, what you do, you define a kind of prefix. So you tell, okay, this guy here, which is this prefix, DC to dots, okay, without the, without the arrow, just this, these guys here, Will be ref will refer to this guy here, okay? Okay. So, for example, and then you must be you must pay attention because sometimes the namespace goes to a, a a slash. You see here, it ends with a slash. Okay. So it's just like uh, um, find a replace. Okay. So if you see here, you f get this part and replace by that. So when you use it on your document, you define the namespace and then you just use the DC to dots to, to, to address it. Okay? But you can also use the same thing. Uh, for example, here, if you pay attention, now I'm using here um, uh, the Fogueirinha, or, or the scope, or sustenido, or lasagna, or what you wish. Okay, so you remember what it, this thing represents in HTML? A reference to an anchor, okay? I didn't show you the anchor, right? But you may, you may imagine that in HTML, if we are talking about HTML, you will have... In the, in, inside the document, you have something that is an anchor, like that, okay? And you put an ID in the anchor, and then you put this thing you want, okay? So this will be an anchor in HTML, okay? And what happens is, when, uh, if you do this kind of link, like that, if you do this kind of link, when you click on it, it goes straight to the anchor. You, you already see that in HTML, right? It goes down and goes straight to the anchor. So this is the way you, you, you refer to a specific part of an HTML document, okay? But that is only if the document is HTML. Here, uh, it's not HTML, okay? If the document is XML, this will refer to an element. And I, I, will, I will talk about an element after. Okay? But this is an element inside the document. This is an element inside the document. And so on and so forth. So they are elements. It's not an anchor. And the difference is an anchor is a point in the document. Okay? When I talk about an element, is the entire scope of the element. It refers to the entire scope of the element. Okay? Uh, I will show that uh, further. Okay. Uh, so, but 
we use the same principle, okay? So this will be re will replace this guy. So here is implicit, is implicit the sustenido, is implicit the uh, scope uh, symbol, okay? Everybody understood? Good. Okay, uh, the namespaces is something that you use in this way. Let me show you. This is an XML document. I will uh, explain uh, XML now, but the basic idea is the following. Consider, for example, that uh, we want to put together, okay, elements of two vocabularies, okay? So, the first vocabulary is on this address here. Okay? In this case, in this specific case, will be a schema. I will talk about schema uh, in this class uh, later. Okay? And I have a second guy here. Okay? Which is a second schema or a second vocabulary. Okay, fine. If you take a look here, you see here I will define a prefix and a second prefix. Okay. So whenever I t I use this prefix here, you see, I'm I'm uh, referring to the first vocabulary here. Okay. Whenever I use the second guy. Which is this guy here. Whenever I use it, I'm referring to this second vocabulary. Okay? Did you understand? Or not? More or less? You can interrupt me. Do you understand? Yeah? Everybody? Okay. So let's talk about XML. So XML was launched in 96. Okay? So let's do a kind of calculation. Uh, 11 years? When I told you that it started the, uh, the web? No, no. The web started in the 90, 89, 90. Okay, six years after that. So you see that it's going, it was fast, right? It was fast. So in 96, they launched the XML, which is a simplified version of SGML. Okay, so I remember, I remember when they launched that because my, my advisor for my master course, he presented this thing to us and he told us we must do research on this thing okay so I read the document and I'm thinking but what is the what's the purpose of the thing because you can create your own text okay so let let us analyze this graph which I presented in the last class okay so in this graph you can see that uh, uh, the XML language, okay, so you remember that I talked to you about the HTML in the last class, right? So I told you, okay, HTML is a language that was produced by using SHML, okay? This is a meta language, so it's a language to design new languages. And HTML is a language, so it was designed in SGML. Okay, okay. So XML is in the same level of SGML. It means that it is a meta language. It's a language to produce new languages. Okay. And but it's a simplified version. Okay, because SGML is they decide that SGML is too complex. It's too big and too complex. Okay? So then, they define, okay, let's produce something more simple. 
and then they proposed uh, XML. Okay, and by using XML, you can, for example, define MathML, SVG, which are languages specified in XML. And we also had the XHTML. Which is what is the XHTML? Is the HTML language designed by using XML? We will talk about it. Okay. Okay. So XML is a markup language, and we we saw that in the last class. Okay. It's the same principle. Okay. So it's the same uh, uh, slides of the last class. This is in Portuguese, but the last class is in English. So you have a tag to open and to close. And you can produce hierarchical structures in XML, right? Like this one or this one. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, so the, the structure of a document in XML is a tree with one root. Each document has one root, it's a tree. Okay. Okay, so but there is a difference here from HTML. There are more than one difference, but okay, there are some difference in the structure of the the language itself, in the sense that, for example, in XML, you you are enforced to open and close tags. In XML, okay, in HTML, you are not enforced to close tags, and this is something that's not uh, sometimes is a problem, okay. Uh, in XML, you have the empty tags. Okay, in HTML, in the past, you didn't have empty tags. Okay, so there are some small differences in the syntax, but the main thing, the main difference, the main problem is now you have the freedom of define your own tags. You define your tags. Okay. And then the question that came to me first time I read I read the thing is why what do you do if each one design their own tags okay so I, I, I was from the HTML generation okay and I, I think okay if you have a tag bold it's, it's clear enough that you must put the text in bold but when I see that in, a, in XML I can define any tag what I will do with this tag this is the question and the problem in fact is that I'm thinking in a browser I'm thinking in a browser like a human uh, browser in the sense that there is a human being which will read the XML and it will be presented in a browser so it's strange to me to think that uh, okay uh, you don't have predefined text. There is no predefined text. You define your own text. Okay, but this is highly. It, this was highly, highly important because uh, if you can define your own vocabularies, your own uh, tags, okay, it will be easy to uh, to to develop programs that can read this data. And do something with it, okay? So uh, it started to to become a kind of standard. Okay. So uh, the XML uh, has two concepts, which we call well-formed document. Okay, so well format document is one thing, and valid document, and there's a second thing. Okay, and what is a well format document? A well format document is an XML document that fits in the rules of XML. Okay, so what's the rules of XML documents? If you open a tag, you must close it. This is a rule. Okay? So if you follow the rule, the document will be well formed. Okay? 
Just follow the rules. Okay. But then there is a second level in XML we call a valid document. Okay. A valid document is a document that first is well formed, so fits in the first part. Okay, it's well formed. But then to be valid, we need a schema. And what is the schema? Who can tell me what is the schema? You can use your Yes, it's a good comparison in the sense that an XML document is an instantiation of an XML schema, right? But what what this schema defines? Right. So the uh, the XML must follow. Let me try to to start the eclipse. Okay. I know I, I'm I'm a brave man. <laughs> the man without fear. Now I will call the eclipse in this kind of. Uh, and I call the last one, the Kepler, the last version. Okay? Okay. So while it loads, I will wait here. Okay. So the schema, if we, we get our, our, our background in the database, for example. Okay? What the, the schema does? Okay? The schema in the database, for example, you define which is the fields. Okay? What is your, uh, tables, right? What is your the fields in the tables, the types, the, the restrictions, and so on and so forth. So it will define which is the the structure, what is the attributes you use, uh, what is the classes in some sense you have. Okay, here we will do the same, but um, I don't know what's that, but let's do. Okay, here we will do the same thing, but uh, now we, we have an hierarchical structure, it's not uh, a, a table like a database, we have an hierarchical structure and you want to define the rules in which you, you can produce your documents. So this will be the schema and uh, okay, so uh, there is this document that tells, okay, uh, there is a big, a big uh, group of documents which is well formed. So, okay. Can I have uh, an XML document without a schema? Yes, you can. You can produce an XML document without defining a schema. And, and if it's well formed, it's fine. You can read it. Okay. But if you want to be more, uh, more specific, you must have a, a valid document okay and I'm not sure why he he, de he devised the valid and the schema valid but the prob probably the thing is I have two ways to define the schema the old fashion and the new fashion okay the old fashion is the DTD is this guy here which I don't know why it's not dead yet okay it's something that is so old and so ugly that I don't know what's the, why is not that it exists yet. Okay, exists yet. And the second way is XML schema. Okay, so I'm considering that this guy is telling. Okay, 
a valid guy is a, a guy that follows a DTD. And a schema valid guy is a guy that follows an XML schema. And there is the useful document, which is, okay, everything plus be useful to something. I don't know. Okay, what is a DTD? A DTD is an old-fashioned <laughs> schema approach, okay? It's highly limited. It defines, for example, which elements we will have in XML. So here, for example, it defines, okay, my document will have uh, this element and this element and so and so forth. And then it can define, for example, that inside the, the document I will have this guy here. And inside this guy here, it's, you have these two guys here. So you follow defining, okay? And and for example, you can tell that the the, the element that's inside you appear just one time, you appear one or more times, you appear zero or more times, and so on and so forth. And if you put this PC data here, if you put this thing, you mean is any free text. You can write whatever you want. Okay. Uh, so the DTD is old, and what do you think could be besides the limitation of the language, which is highly limited? What do you think is a second problem in DTD? There is a second important problem in DTDs. May you imagine what is this problem? Ah, I didn't put attributes there, but you can define attributes also in the same way. You just put attribute and the name and so on. But but uh, the thing is. Uh, the important thing here is the following. The specification of an XML document is not in XML. They created a new kind of language, okay, to produce the DTD, which is different from the XML itself, right? It's a kind of second specification, right? And this is not good. Because you are used in XML, why not doing everything in XML? Makes sense, right? So for this reason, they evolved for the, to the XML schema, which is defined in XML. So the XML schema is defined in XML, and this is good because you don't need to learn two approaches. You stay in XML, okay? And it's more powerful than DTD. Much more powerful. Okay. So let's now uh, let's now play a bit with XML. Okay. We will play in this environment. I don't know if you know it. The name of the environment is um, Eclipse. Okay. I create a new project here. I create a web project. Oh, I think I think I opened the modeling guy. Let me see. Ah, all this time, and I opened the wrong guy. Sorry. Oh, this is modeling. I didn't see that. I need this one. What I show you is. Uh, that you can use the Eclipse environment 
to create XML file and XML schema. Okay, and XML schema is much even more important because XML schema is hard to write, and you can use the tool to produce your own schema if you wish. Okay. Okay, to, to run the thing that I show you now, you need the Enterprise Edition of the Eclipse, okay? Which comes with uh, web and HTML and things like that, okay? So, while it starts to read, uh, I will tell you that uh, XML has two kinds of types, okay? When you define uh, things like fields or elements or so on, you can define that it's a simple type. For example, it is a, a string, like that, okay? So here is a, uh, a way to define that the type is a string and here is the length. When you define that something is a simple type, so in this case I'm defining this business element, okay? You will use one of the predefined types of the XML schema. So the XML schema has this, this big tree of types and you can define that uh, a given uh, field is from is uh, of a specific type, okay? So this is the thing they call simple type. Okay, it open here. Let's try now a new project. I start an a static web project, okay? Okay, I call it web to learn. Next. Okay. All right. So, I will create this web project and I will create uh, first an XML schema. I will create a schema. Okay. So let's consider that I want to create um, a profile card. Okay, I want to create a profile card. So I want to to have some XML file which has the profile of people. Okay. Okay, so uh, to do that, I can imagine a file like that. Let's let's try to to write. Oh no. I have a better example because this example is already running. Or oh, no. No. Let's produce a profile. Okay. So I will start creating an XML file here. Other. Oh, okay. And here on the web, I will tell, okay, I want to create. No. Here, XML, sorry. I want to create an XML file. In the beginning, it's just a kind of. Uh, it's just a kind of uh, draft, so I will not 
creating a schema. I will just create a valid, valid no, a well formatted XML document. Just for numbers. Okay, so let's call call it profile. And let's put it in the so it wants to know if I want to start from the XML template. Uh, No, I don't want to create from nothing. Let me see if I did something wrong. XML template. Let's try this one. Okay. Nothing. Good. Okay, now uh, I have an XML file. Okay, and now I start to I start to. You have two ways to see the document: the source. Okay, so here, for example, I can come here and create here profile and slash profile. Good. You are happy. It's good to to. And here you see in this second view of the Eclipse, you can see the structure of XML. So you see there is an element whose name is profile. Okay. And then I can use things like uh, what's the name of the guy? Okay. Good. So now, if you see the design here, you see there is this element name inside the element profile, and the content of the element name is Andreas Santanke. Okay. And now I will put here my an attribute. Okay. So uh, I will put the attribute uh, ID. Okay. Which could be, for example, a CPF or something. But I will not put my CPF here. I will put just any number. Okay. Again, if you come here, you see the structure of the document. And you see that it puts the A letter for attributes. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead. Now I want to... Let's... Let's define that that is the the profile, the name. Okay, so uh, let's put a tag here. Let's call it born. Or let's call it, not not born. I called it uh, in the what? Uh, I, I call it uh, in the specification another name is hometown. Hometown. No, not hometown. I call born. I let's put city. Okay. So city will be Ascoli Pichin. Okay. Then can have state. Let's put the country. In my case, Italy. Okay. So I produced the kind of uh, simple document. Now let's think back. If you go here, you see the structure of it. Okay. You see, it's easy to see, and you can even edit the data if you wish here. You can edit here if you wish. Okay. But now let's produce a schema. And the schema for this file. How you do that? Okay. So let's go ahead here and I will start, I will create a new other and here I have XML file. 
schema file. Okay. And let's call it profile schema. Fair enough? Okay. So then I will finish here and it opens to me and this is really really something important I can tell you that uh, XML schema is hard to write it's really hard so uh, wh one thing like that is highly useful this visual tool to produce XML schema is highly useful okay Okay, so uh, what happens here? What happens is the following. In the left side, you have elements. And in the right side, you have types. And when you define an element, you tell the system, okay, this element is a simple element, a simple type, as I show you, do, or is a complex element. But, if this, the element is a complex element, you must tell to the system which type is it. So, you must produce firstly a type and then relate the type to the element. I will show you that now. So, let's consider, for example, that you want to create an element which is name. Okay? And a simple element which is name. Okay. So, we come here. And you click with the right button and put add element. Good. And this add element will be name. Fair. Okay, so the system tells me, okay, this is an string. It, uh, it uh, defines by itself. This is an string. Okay. And in fact, this is equivalent to that. It will produce this kind of thing here. Okay, so I can tell the same thing. This is an, a string element. Okay, the content of the element is an string. It can be a date, it can be a number, whatever you want. Okay, well, okay. So, but um, the thing is, uh, the element is a string. Okay, but the element in the left side is something concrete that appears in the document. The idea is you always start by thinking on the root. So what you are telling me that there is a document with the root is name and the name is a string. Just it. But I want I want much more. I want to produce an hierarchy, right? And to produce an hierarchy in XML, you must create types. You put types, so for example, consider here the following. Born aggregates city and country, right? Okay. So let's create here in the right side a type whose name is, a complex type whose name is born t and this t means born type okay okay good and then if i do a double click on it a double click it will open the screen to produce the born type okay so let's let's check a bit now the source just to see what's happening okay so you see there an element, right? An element here, which is name, which is a string. And a complex type, which I call born t. Okay? Good? Right. Okay, so now, let's do the following. Oh, sorry. I will tell that, okay, inside this document, inside inside the born t I did something wrong what's rep what's happening here it's not necessary it will not appear the I oh, born t okay 
So inside the born key now, I click on the right side of the mouse and tell, okay, add an element. So it will add an element inside the born key. Okay? And now you tell the element is city. And city is a string. Good? And also you can tell, okay, and there is also the country. And country is a string. Good. Okay, so I created, I have created Bounty as a type. Okay, I started to create a kind of hierarchy. And you see that if I tell that is a type, I can put inside it other elements. Right? Okay. But how can I go much in, a, in, in another level? For example, now I want to create the, the entire profile. How do you think by using this tool I can create the profile now? I'll click here to go back. How do you think I can create the entire profile? Wake up! Are you following my, my rationality? Did you understand what I told until now? Did you understand? Okay, so what do you think I must do now if I want to create a profile element? What's my steps? First question is, profile is simple or complex? Complex. Okay, so if it's a complex, what I told you about complex? You must create a type. Each complex element requires a type. It means that I must create a complex type for profile. Okay? So I will create here now a profile T. Okay? Profile type. Good. I will enter here and now I will add. What I will add here? First name, right? Name. And after name, born type. But the name of the element is born. Right? The name of element is born. And the type of the element, now I click here and find the type. The type of the element will be born type. Let's browse. And in the browse, I will find here the types that I created. So you see here, born type. Okay. Oh, beautiful, right? It creates the the drawing of okay, born type. Uh, in, in you see, right? It's how can I say for few in. In English, it's cute. It's cute, right? Oh, it's so cute. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so here now I define the entire structure of my HTML document, and 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 you see, you can see that I can go in any level I want, right? And then, so it doesn't make sense now anymore. Sorry, here. Uh, let me go up again. It doesn't make sense anymore. This name here, okay, doesn't make sense because now the name is inside the profile type, okay. So I remove it. I remove it, and now I will create an element which is the root, right? I will call profile, and this element, sorry. This element, I must change the type, and the type will be uh, 
profile type. Right? Will be profile type. So now I have all the structure I need. If you want to see the XML, it's like that. Okay, so I have one complex element which is born T, which has two elements inside it in sequence. So it defines the sequence. Okay, so I, I use it just a part of the specification of a schema. We will not learn all the specification, right? So you can tell alternate elements, so it can be one or the other, or so on and so forth. Uh, okay, so it's a sequence of two elements, city and country. And then there is the complex type profile, which it has uh, name and born. Okay, and then there is the element profile, which is from the type uh, profile type. Okay, this is the structure of the element. And we can define even attributes. Okay, so for example, uh, for attributes, let's say that. Okay, there is an attribute here, right? ID is an attribute. Okay, so we can put here in the profile type. We can come in the profile type here. And we can put here add attribute. And here I can tell ID, for example. And if I wish, I can even tell that ID is an integer, for example. Okay. So it's it's forced to have an integer attribute. Okay. Okay. This is a good question. I mean, always uh, the, in the, the in the way I I did the thing, it seems that we always have in the left just one guy, right? It seems, but but it's possible to have more than one, and I you you tell me, but how it's possible since you told uh, now that there is one only one root, right? There will be alternative roots, okay? So it's like you are define the schema, and you start from one of the elements you define it, right? And then you go down, okay? Not more than one, so there will be alternative, okay? Because each each XML document has only one root, and this is this is I we will discuss that when we do a comparison of several models here because we'll talk about models on the web, and we will see that this is good in my point of view. This is good to deploy things. If you want to deploy something, you put everything in a document, so you have this hierarchy and put everything there, and you deploy things. This is good. But it is really bad when you want to do a database, okay? Because this strange hierarchical thing is hard to do things on that, okay? And the problems start. I, I told. I will talk about that. I will return on this issue. I will just show you now. Uh, if you want to produce this, so this guy here, this guy here. Is a well formed document, but this is still not a valid document. It's still not because I'm not pointing the schema. I'm not pointing the schema. Okay. Now I will produce I will produce a valid document. Okay? Now comes the magic of Eclipse. Okay, let's go and do the magic. We can create uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Name is not here. I think it's here. Okay, yes. I will create uh, other here. I will create an XML file. But then, okay, so I will show it. I will call it profile 2. Good. Next. And then I will tell create an XML file from the schema. Now I will point in the schema. Okay. Then I can select the schema. Oh, it is so easy. In the past you have to struggle to do something that works. But now, you see, 
uh, it can create for you the structure and so on and so forth and bang bang what it does oh it creates the a kind of uh, template with the structure of the document see so now here I can fill the files and see is Ascoli and here country is Italy okay and here uh, I must put what is it the ID what is the ID you didn't put the ID okay so let's put here ID no let's put PNS ID equal uh, okay so uh, uh, the way I define it sorry something is wrong here what's wrong Must have an ID. No? What I did wrong? Oh, file key ID int. Of course, it's allowed without namespace. No, it's not possible. Oh, it's strange. It's really strange. Ah, okay. Okay, no, no, it's strange. <laughs> it's, uh... What? Um... Yeah, but, uh, but, uh, you see that, yeah, right, yeah. Right, that boots. Uh, yeah, you are right. You don't need to put in the attributes. Okay. So here uh, you see that we are using na it uses as the default namespace. You see, it uses namespaces. So this is namespace. And why it uses namespaces? Because if you wish, you can produce documents crossing more than one schema. Okay. So you can have two schemas in the same document okay I will show you something like that uh, no I show you no no not now it's too hard to find okay but the, the, the thing is how is it possible to put together two schemas okay the idea is in your schema you must have points of extension so the XML schema enables you to define points in which you can insert things of other schemas okay but it must be predefined it's not just any place I can put whatever I want it's not like that you must define okay so for example I want to accept something inside this document I must define where I it will be extended okay and then I just tell here it's possible to extend and then the other schema you define how it will be okay so and, and in this sense to, to control what is one schema what's the other schema we can use the namespace okay but this is something that is highly limited in XML because you must plan in advance any possible extension and if the guy that designed the, the original schema didn't think in the extensions, you cannot mix, blend, or extend uh, schemas. Okay? So this is a problem. We will sh I will show you that when you come to the models of semantic web, like RDF, you don't need to plan the extensions. You can extend everything you want, in any point you want. You, 
all is extensible by default. So it's a change of uh, rationality. Here you have much more uh, control and thing. And there is an argument to that. Here we are going to the same assumption of database. Do you know the closed word assumption? You remember that in database? Closed word assumption? No? The idea of closed word assumption is I have the control and the knowledge of my word and what's true and what's false. Okay? So I can tell in advance when I read the document, this is true, this is false, this is right, this is wrong. So the closed word assumption means that I know all the possible uh, variations and I can define a schema that tells all the valid things and everything that's outside this is invalid. So the, this, this is in databases, for example, when you define a database schema, everything that doesn't fit in the database schema is false, right? You cannot, if you tell that a field is integer, you cannot put a field on a string. It will not accept. So this is the idea. This is the closed word assumption. And here is the same. Okay? In XML schema is a closed word assumption. I can define, I can predefine what's true, what's false. And you to accept only what's, what fits exactly in the schema. Okay? And when you go to the semantic web in the upper levels, like RDF, you change to the open word assumption. Okay? Because when you, you go to upper levels of semantics, it's not possible to be so hard. Okay? I mean, I don't know if it's possible, but the, the, uh, the, the standards now, they are much more, uh, uh, they are much more, um, they accept much more things, so it's an open word assumption. And, and, and this, this trade-off of closed word and open word, when you have a closed word, you have much more control, you can tell what's valid, what's invalid, and so on and so forth, but, when you have an open word assumption, you, you have much more possibilities of extensions, of combinations, of distribution of knowledge, as I will show you in future classes. Okay? Everybody follow the idea? Okay. So now uh, I will go back to the thing of the hierarchy. Okay? What happens? What happens, I don't know if you know, what happens when I want, for example, consider this, this document here, okay? But if there is a second person born in Italy, okay? So let's put here a second person. So my schema doesn't allow me more than one element yet. Doesn't allow me that. So I will change it to accept more than one element, okay? And to do that, I must tell the, it that I can accept several, uh, several uh, warranty, no, no, several profiles, right? Can be several profiles. So to accept several profiles, uh, I will go up and here, I will go here and tell set multiplicity, no, in this level I cannot do that. Ah, right, you are right. I cannot have several profiles. Oh. Okay, I cannot have several profiles, so I will do I will create an extra level up okay and tell okay we have uh, here add complex type and I will have profile set T okay Okay, and I will tell that a profile set T has profile T, no, sorry, profile, which is uh, 
a profile t good and now i will set the multiplicity i will tell that a profile will have at least one and more than one okay so when i set that it will define here what well, what's happened it must appear here it appears a beautiful What is it? Oh God. Okay. <laughs> it's some kind of bug. You see, one or several. Okay. And the thing is, I can tell here that I have a profile set. Okay. Let me try that. I don't know if it works, but profile set. T. Let's see. No. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. So in this case, your question, can, can, I, can I stay with both? Yes. Okay. So now, if, it, if both stay there, I can have two kinds of documents. One document starts in the root with profile and can, ha can have just one profile. If you start with profile, you will have just one, and that's it. Okay? The second option is, okay, I want to have more than one profile. Okay? So now, you must have a profile set here. Okay? And then, you put these guys inside, and you have... It helps you. Profile. Oh. Okay, so this is the second option. Yeah. You cannot have... No, you, you can... Yeah. So you must start with profile set and then you can have several inside it or just profile and that's it. Okay. Okay, so now I will create a second profile here with another guy here. Ah, there is something important here. Something important I forgot. I can tell, if I wish, I can tell that the ID, this guy here, instead of int, I can tell it is an ID. ID. Uh, browse. It's ID type. What is it? ID. Like that. Okay. And what's the importance of telling that is ID? The importance is the following. What's happening here? ID an element eh, is not valid with respect of its type. Why not? Why not? It 
it doesn't accept numbers hmm. this is new to me okay okay I didn't know that but the thing is when you tell that something is ID okay the rules are first uh, you cannot have uh, duplicity okay so each attribute must have a different value for the other okay cannot have duplicity right yeah, and the XML will control that okay so uh, it's a kind of unique identifier of something inside the document okay and when I use this uh, when I use a link with this uh, scopo, right? Sustenido, and I put something. Okay, this will refer to the value of the ID, and it's it's unique in the entire document of any ID attribute, not just from the uh, profile elements. Any element, you cannot have two elements of any kind with two uh, equivalent IDs. Okay. So the thing is, I can write something like, I can write something like, consider that this document here I'm writing, okay, is something like HTTP, eh, blah, 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 profile XML, okay, this is the document, and now I want to point to the element ABC, so I put a, B, C. Just that. I don't need to tell which attribute it is. Why not? Because since the value of the attribute is unique in any ID attribute of the, the document, I can guarantee that you have just one A, B, C in the entire document. Okay? And this reference, and this is highly important, this reference is not to this point. This reference it to for this entire element. Okay, so that address that I wrote refers to this fragment, the entire element. Okay, did you understand that? And I, I will exploit that a lot when I use the query languages, the linking languages, and so on and so forth. So this is really important to understand. Okay, it's it's clear for everybody. Okay. So, okay, but now let's consider the following. Uh, we have two guys, André and Asdrubal. Okay, and then Asdrubal also born in Italy. Okay, in Pescara, for example. In Italy. Okay, and then the, 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 the question is, both guys born in Italy, okay, and it's possible that one tells Italy and the other tells it, for example. And then this is a problem, right? A consistency problem that we study that in database, right? We don't want to, uh, we don't want to um, to have. Uh, how can I say? I don't want to have. Uh, uh, duplicity, right? Because when I have these kinds of things, I have consistency problems, I have a lot of problems, so I want to have a kind of way to reference that. How I do that in relational databases? How I solve that in relational databases? Do you know? You create a table. We call that normalization. You remember that? You normalize the thing, okay? You create a new table with the code and the description and so on, and you, you do the for egg and key. You remember that? Okay. SQL and these things is happy. We are happy to remember that. Okay, so and we do that. Can I do that in XML? You can. Of course you can, right? You you may imagine that this guy will produce something. If you cannot do something, you will be but it's an ugly way, okay? It's ugly, but you can, okay? How you do that in XML? Okay, I will do the following. Let's go back to, to the to the 
draft board here and let's do the following. I will create a country key. Put country key. Okay? And in the country key guy, I will create an attribute which I call um, ID, for example. And this attribute, I will tell that is an ID attribute. Okay? So it has this property of uniqueness in the entire document. Okay? Good. And then I create an element I will call name, for example, which can be a string, which is the name of the country. Fair? Okay. Good. Now, I will change my bounty here. And instead of a string, I will tell this is a ID half. Oh, it must be an attribute, I think. Let me see. I don't know. Ah, okay. Okay. So now, this is a reference to an existing uh, ID. It must be a reference to an existing ID. Okay. So now, what you happen here? Let's go. So now, the thing is, first. Oh, sorry. I must tell that... No, no, it's okay. No, it's not okay. I must tell that country T multiplicity No, it's not the country T. Oh! I must put the country inside the profile set. Sorry. So now, uh, add element and I tell country and I tell that multiplicity is one or more and country will be country key type. Okay. So what will happen now in our profile? First, I will create a TNS country here. Good. And ID Italy, for example. Okay. And here I will tell Italy. No, no. No. I need to have a name. Right? Italy. Okay. Oh. TNS. Ah. You can tell. I didn't show you that. But you can tell that there is a default namespace. Okay. I, you can tell. There is a default namespace. And you don't need to use the, the, the prefix. Because. Okay. I can show you that further. Okay. So now. It's tell me something. Yeah, okay, so now this guy here must be it. Okay, let's see it's now. Okay, so what happens here now? You see that both elements now are referring to a valid ID, which is Italy. So it's a foreign key. Okay, it's a foreign key. Okay. But why I'm telling this is ugly? Why I'm telling this is ugly? This is ugly because I will show you that further. Uh, this kind of combination of hierarchy and uh, and foreign key is not something natural, okay? Because then you kind of start losing the hierarchy in some sense. Because now I have a link to some other point of the document, so it's not anymore exactly a hierarchy, right? So this is becomes a kind of uh, mess. <laughs> okay? And and if you think in XML like a database, if you think I want to create a database, doesn't make sense to have a root. 
A root is something to a document, not for a database. Okay. So uh, the way the the I'm, I'm the the community is evolving to use XML for database. Okay. The, uh, XML databases are, are really really strong now. Okay. But it, this is just to show you. Okay. That. Uh, that it's it's uh, not easy to to think in XML like a database. Okay. Uh, okay. So I um, go ahead. Enumerated. Yes, you can create these things, but enumerated is something that you just define the label. If the thing that you are pointing is something that has more description of the country, how many habitants, and so on, like a, a database. Okay, if you are doing something like uh, normalization, enumeration will not solve your problem. Do you understand? Consider that each country, I don't want just the name of the country. I have, I have all the information of this country. Several fields of the information. How you do that with enumeration? It's, it's a problem of normalization. It's, it cannot be solved in enumeration. Enumeration is good for name of months or something that's... But this kind of thing is usually used doing by reference. Good. Okay. So, this is an exercise you must do at home. Okay. And for the next class, uh, and uh, uh, next class, you will understand why you need to do this exercise. Okay. So, we will write it down. And in the next class on next Thursday, okay, you can bring it. It can be on paper. Okay. It's just to. Discuss in the class. Okay. More questions? Did you understand my, my answer? Okay. More questions? Okay. So.